After a two-year hiatus, classical pianist Oppenhong returned to Kent to bring his creative and entertaining outreach to Kent school children as part of the Spotlight Concert Series for the City of Kent. Alpen not only plays amazing classical music on the piano, but he does it with his own style and pizzazz, something that earlier in life was seen as a criticism he sees now as his greatest strength. As I was growing up, I remember my there were some teachers and judges that told me that I moved too much when I play that it was distracting from the music, or that stylistically I was playing Chopin not the way that Chopin should be played. And I thought that was very interesting, and only now as an adult that I've realized how wrong that is, that Chopin didn't play it the way that they might have interpreted it to be. Yes, stylistically, there was an instrument that he had, and there was a certain way of playing it, but the compositions that come down to us, a lot of them, like for example, Beethoven sonatas, they were never meant to be played as concert pieces. They are orchestral, they are sketches for his orchestral works. So he'd probably be horrified that, you know, all 32 piano sonatas are being, you know, uh, played in concerts, you know, back to back to back. Um, it's wonderful to hear them that way, but I think the approach that, oh, well, you know, they're these, you know, this hallowed repertoire that has to be played this way, and we're judged on the way it should be played this way. I think that's kind of wrong, because I, it's the innovators in music that, that, that are immortal, you know, because Beethoven broke down the boundaries of the sonata. Uh, Bach broke down the boundaries of the fugue. That, you know, some people think, oh, Bach, the great mathematician, he, he worked within a particular system. He was the master of playing it, of doing it, Per mathematically perfect music, when in fact he did more to stretch the boundaries of the form than anyone did, which is why he's immortal. And uh, I remember I was, I was in Wisconsin, and I was talking to a group of uh, students that were getting ready for their solo ensemble juries, their instrumental and vocal. And there was a, a rule in, in the rubric that was talking about the fact that uh, don't let your outward physical gestures detract from the music. And I was just thinking, all the musicians that are famous, that are effective, I mean, these days, their physical presence and their image has more to do than with their effectiveness as performers, even than the music is. And so I think the idea that, 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 that a young person who is just trying to discover who they are is supposed to shut that down, I think just feels wrong to me. And I wouldn't have a career if I played that way. And I don't want to go to a concert where everyone plays the same. Because otherwise, why wouldn't we just listen to a recording of Horowitz? And, and, and there's no reason to play these pieces again. When I started doing this and doing outreach performances in schools and playing for young, uninitiated audiences, those unfamiliar with classical music, uh, it was a very a risk, and there was a couple of reasons why I did it. Uh, the first was kind of out of um, <laughs> professionally, I felt like if I didn't invest in the audience of the future, uh, I didn't know if they would be there in 20 years, and hopefully I'm still playing 20 years and 30 years from now that there isn't an audience uh, for classical music. But uh, I really I realized soon that it was improving my own playing because uh, the an effective performer I believe is one that that can connect with their audiences and. Uh, obviously, if I'm a classical musician or an entertainer, you know, uh, inhabiting the, the wider realm of media and entertainment, uh, if I'm relevant to more than just a classical, you know, the classical aficionados out there, which are a small, you know, they're a loyal audience, but, uh, you know, we're a couple generations removed from uh, when many people are experiencing classical music in the home, at church, or at school even, um, it, it, I wouldn't be able to stay relevant if I wasn't playing and understanding who, what my audience was listening to and being current that way and presenting that way. Um, also, I, I, I always remember when I was a kid growing up in school, the things that really stuck with me were these kind of performers or these experiences you had in school that allow you to see beyond the boundaries of the school, these field trips. I always remember field trips and, and these assemblies where you'd bring somebody from outside and it really opened your mind and those really stuck with me. Uh, and I wanted to be able to provide that for as many students as possible because I, I feel like if we can uh, give them a more global perspective early on, it'll prepare them a little bit more for the world 
world, the world that they will inhabit in secondary education and beyond. When you learn the whole thing through and you're playing it in front of other people, the further along the piece you get, the better you know it. My, the whole point of my presentation is to connect with the things that they already enjoy. And um, I always say that I'm sneaking in the education with the entertainment. Um, yes, we do laugh and we have fun and we listen to, you know, and I, I perform for them a video game and TV and movie music that they all love. And they, oh, I know that. Um, but I use that contract to introduce the higher concept of, say, intervals and the emotional response to performances. I, I actually played this piece as an encore to a performance that I played at Carnegie Hall. A few years ago, I got to play at Carnegie Hall, 5,000 people, New York Times was there, my teacher was there, my whole family was there. I played a whole classical concert of uh, Mozart, Bach, Beethoven, Chopin, Rachmaninoff. And at the end, I was like, man, I really want to play something as a shout out to my friends that are sitting in the poor seats in the back. <laughs> and so imagine I was, you know, I was dressed in a tux, you know, I came out like, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great privilege to perform for you tonight. Music in my life has always been full of heroes. But when I was young, my hero was this man. You know, when I, when I go into a school, uh, part of what you had talked about this morning was um, uh, kind of flipping their expectations on their head. Now, if I was a middle schooler uh, attending this school and I was told that a Korean-American classical pianist was going to present assembly for me, I have an automatic picture in my mind and I'm not, you know, I'm not denigrating all those classical, you know, Korean-American classical pianists who have, who have made that, that image. But you know, there's an image I have in mind of what this might be, you know, go up there and you know, just play a bunch of pieces for me. You know, it'll be beautiful playing. It'll probably be really awesome to watch. But there's a connection to somebody who has played the piano since the time he was four, and you know, didn't leave a room. You know, for the first ten years of his life is probably something that most kids are not going to connect to. But a lot of kids are going to connect to somebody who watched the tra who watched Transformers, The Avengers, Lord of the Rings, and uh, Harry Potter, and enjoyed themselves and you know, enjoyed themselves with their parents. And I was uh, identifying that entertainment that both their parents enjoyed and that they enjoyed together, I feel like this is a really great uh, place to start because um, my, I hope that my live performances are one where whether or not you are uh, a grandparent, a parent, or a child, you can enjoy yourself and experience it in a way that is kind of difficult to find in other areas of entertainment. Entertainment is so focused these days to focus groups, right? Focus groups. This movie is for boys age 18 to 35. This, this, this is for um, you know, just married couples with a kid. You know, there's, there's, there's movies that are, that are made for that and calculated for that. Even iTunes these days, of course, uh, it focuses you into the music you already like, right? Rather than, I think, the idea, it's very difficult, even though access to m music and entertainment is at the drop of a hat, at the touch of a finger, but uh, discovering something new is harder than it's, it's been before. He is the dark knight, right? He's a dark hero. He's not, you know. <laughs> Taking the mystery of classical music and breaking it down into its simple, kid-friendly components. There are certain things that are so popular. Star Wars, Harry Potter, even the classic video game Super Mario Brothers, which is amazing to me because uh, I make the joke that um, that theme is classical music because it was written in 1984. Now those of us that grew up in the 80s and saw the birth of that type of entertainment, uh, just like maybe the generation before probably, you know, you know, there's certain music that spans the generations because of the way that it made us feel. It only takes two notes. This one, and this one. Right? Just repeat. Right, now, 
that's only two notes, but your parents and grandparents, when they heard that, they were suddenly gripped by the terror that they're about to be eaten by a shark, right? <laughs> now, every two notes that you play has a certain emotional response to it. You know, some of them are the consonant in intervals, like major, third, you know. <laughs> you know, perfect fifth is right. Life is good. You know, major six is nice. You know. Yeah. You know, when you put those, you know, when you put that, that music together, no matter what you write, it's always happy. <laughs> you know, my favorite is like SpongeBob, you know. Okay. How old are you guys, man? I mean, <laughs> You know, I am a pop culture maven. I'm a you know avid video gamer. I, you know, I uh, a comic book geek. And of course, you know the things that probably were dorky, considered dorky for us when we were young, are now popular culture uh, now that we're older. I remember you know playing video games back in the day probably uh, would have been seen as a big waste of time. But uh, now, as I live close to Silicon Valley, those the, those video game nerds are the ones that rule the world. <laughs> the good guys theme in Star Wars is. There's the... If you change one note and make it chromatic, you get... Luke, go back to class. I actually don't feel like I'm that unique. I, I know that the kids that are in band and the choir are also some of the kids that are skateboarders, uh, actors, spray painters, you know, that we're, we're not, you know, one kind of, you know, monochromatic people. Like everybody in them, you know, the quiet kid, you know, you don't know who, th that kid could be Jimi Hendrix and you don't know it. It's just that thing that brings it out of him uh, in terms of certain audiences. I've, I remember uh, meeting a very, uh, you know, quiet, reserved uh, a sophomore at one of my high school performances and, uh, you know, he invited me to, house, to his house to play video games. And so I played, you know, Halo with him. And he turned out to be like the greatest video gamer that I have ever met. This, man, this kid was evil at it. He was so good. And it was really his talent and his passion. And I was just like, you know what? The dedication that you put in this, you know, your friends, your, the people at your school may not recognize this because this is something that you exhibit in your home. But it was amazing how he opened up when, he, when I was on his turf, how confident he was. He was a leader and to all these people online to whom he's just a faceless guy with a name, he is the man, he's the man. One, this is two, three, four, five, six. I did a student performance like this where afterwards, a death metal band, high school death metal band came up to me, you know, five students, tattooed up, piercings everywhere, hardcore, you know, slipknot t-shirts. They came up to me, they're like, hey man, do you, do you have any advice? You know, we're a, heavy, we're, we're a death metal band and we're trying to make it. I was very flattered. I was like, you're going to ask a classical musician? And I was thinking to myself, what advice do I have for a death metal band? And then I was thinking, you know what, there are, I, t I speak about universal things in performance, uh, that apply whether or not you're a death metal band or a classical musician. And I told them, I was like, well, uh, to the singer, uh, before you can scream, you have to learn how to sing. Because all the greatest death metal band screamers are great singers as well. Uh, you have to know, like you said, you have to know the rules before you break them. You have to know beauty before you can make ugliness. Like, you know, j just, just being like in a teenage angst by itself doesn't have the power if you don't have the, that sense of the opposite of that, you know. And uh, I said, the other thing is that in your songs, if you don't tell a story, it's not interesting. If it's just a bunch of screaming and angst, like, that's not going to do it. You need a story behind it. That's compelling. <laughs> If the only thing that I manage to do while I'm here is to imbue uh, these students with a sense of individuality and self-confidence that allows them to identify what makes them special and give them the courage to, to work on that thing over years, I believe that the, that will guide them into finding out what is it they were meant to do. And as you and I both know, we obviously do what we love.
I believe that the challenges facing us as a society today requires the next generation to be more innovative, creative, passionate, and risk-taking than we are. Uh, environmental problems, social problems, political problems, this divide that, uh, oh, these things just can't be solved, that we're, he we're headed for the abyss. We need the next Elvis. We need the next Abraham Lincoln. We need the next Mozart to be out there. Uh, and that kid in the 10th row, third row in, just having that spark in his mind, he's like, man, I can really do this. T even if he, and like I said, the point is not to make all these kids musicians, even the ones that are already musicians. It is for them to realize that there is a bigger world outside the walls of their high school, the boundaries of their town, the borders of the state, and even, you know, uh, the country they live in. That we live in a global economy and that, you know, it, the world is a smaller place it's been for. And for them to find their place will require them to identify who they are inside, whether they do it musically, scientifically, athletically, uh, because the, the one quality that I hope to leave behind is self-confidence. But it's the harmony actually that really gets you, because there's one note that I call the Harry Potter note, it sticks out and doesn't seem like it belong. And when I played it, you guys were like, those, it kind of makes me feel, uh, you know, if I were to if I were to change those to constant intervals, Harry Potter would sound like this. I am of the opinion that it's just music. You know, we are raised to believe that, that you know, through the uh, Tower Records Virgin Megastore model, that there is classical music, there is pop music, there is world music. I love that description, world music. What's world music? Is it music that's not from America? You know, that's world music. Um, that there are stratifications between uh, music, and I don't believe that that's the case. Uh, some people, they say, oh, well, video game music and movie music, it's, it's cheaper music than Beethoven and Rachmaninoff. And I don't believe that's the case at all. If, if music is to be judged on uh, the way that it influences people, the way that it marks certain uh, important uh, times in your life, then I think all of that music is equally valid, whether or not it was a little ditty or even a cell phone ringer. It's just the, the way that we interpret it and the way that uh, uh, we imbue uh, what it does to our lives and imbues our lives with meaning. That's the important part. Even the composers that, that, play, that compose video game music know that they're there to influence your emotions. Uh, what if you were to pick up a video game, you press start, first level start, and it was this. <laughs> Boom! First enemy hit you, game over, you're dead. <laughs> that was it. Well, you'd probably be like me if you're like me, and I've done this before. You take the controller, you throw it against the TV, <laughs> You take the game out of the box or the DS, wherever you played, and you, you've never played again, right? But even composers know that they want they want to suck you in into that feeling. So uh, it's not until like the second level where it starts to get hard. Um, you know, Ma Mario goes underground. It's uh, it's dark. It's scary. He's in the sewers. There's less time. There's more holes in the ground. Enemies move faster. You probably will die. And the music is this. Now you guys are like, oh. Alpen works to build self-confidence, like to help youth on. discover their you know, talents and encourages them music, to pursue their passions. Two years ago, Alpen gave his inspirational presentation to Kent students, and they were listening, or more specifically, Arias was listening, intently. He took Alpen's teaching to heart and practiced the piano and waited for Alpen to return, which he did. To Kent Meridian High School the morning before his concert and after we conducted our outreach interviews. Here's a story of what happened that morning at Kent Marine High School as we caught up with Alpen and Arias right before Alpen went on stage for his concert at Kent Marine Performing Arts Center. I've been talking to Alpen over Facebook and last time I saw him was two years ago. And I'd played a song back then. He was like, oh, hey, you got potential. So I've been trying to keep in touch with him, trying to say, hey, you coming back to KM? I really want to play a song for you. So he came back today and I played a song that I crammed all night. Like, I stayed up really late trying to do what I could and also practiced this morning. And then I played it for him. And from what it looked like, he was just blown away. And then I played another one from him, and that just added two. And <laughs> it was really exciting. Uh, Mr. Mr. McWhorter is not telling you the whole story. I think he's being incredibly humble, which is already, already a good trait. 
considering his immense talent and creativity and, and poise already. Um, <laughs> the real reason why we've really kept in touch uh, is that uh, we've, we've killed a bunch of aliens together um, on Xbox Live. Uh, he is one of the very few um, uh, students that I have met uh, in my travels uh, where I, 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 you know, I give signatures out, but I gave him my gamer tag. And so we've kept in touch online uh, playing Halo together. And, uh, you know, and of course he had told me, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm playing the piano. I hope when you come back, you want to come listen to me. I'm like, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Just don't kill me, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't shoot me, please. He's so good. So, so um, uh, you know, I, I come here this morning, and there he is in the front row. I'm like, ah, yeah, Arias is here. Great, great. And he comes, and he's going to play for me. And I'm like, you know, I've, I've got my reservation. Just like, yeah, man, this, this, he, was, he was really passionate when I met him. I was just like, well, you know, maybe he's been working hard. The thud of my jaw hitting the ground when he played. After the second piece, after he played it for me, I literally was just like, you know what? You have to play with me tonight. Uh, because I think that Arias is the, pr the prime example of what the arts can do in a young person's life. Uh, it is going to give him a perspective and introduce him to the world in a way that few things can. And it is my hope that he takes that passion with him, whatever it is he does, whether or not it's music or not. We'd be happy to have him in the community. But uh, whatever he happens to do, I, I plan to watch him too, because I, uh, I really felt that there's something unique to him. That, you know, by the way, colleges, you'd be lucky to have this guy. So you better get that scholarship money ready, because he's going he's to change the world somehow. You're playing with Alpen Hong. <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> Yeah, he's not the opening act. He's That's not? Act. No. Oh. No, 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 no. He is the closer. Oh. Uh, people don't know this, uh, but they will. The people that uh, know it tonight is that, you know, he did say we are playing the classics. One thing that we are united by, if anything else besides being gamers, is our love of the classic... Uh, classical video. type of music, yeah. Yeah, cl yeah, classical type of music, exactly. It's, give it away. it's a very... Special music to us, like it's what gives us that thump in our step. Yes, exactly. It's it's stuck in your head all day. It's stuck in your head all day. You can't get rid of it. It's the thing that moved us when we were kids. Oh yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we hope still today, moves me today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and judging by the reaction of his compatriots and his classmates, um, I think that uh, classical music and classic music has the ability to move and change emotions and inspire and elevate. Uh, even today. So uh, I can't wait to just to, to kill this with you. Uh, it's going to be badass. Yeah. Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Arias McCord.
If the only thing that I manage to do while I'm here is to imbue uh, these students with a sense of individuality and self-confidence that allows them to identify what makes them special and give them the courage to, to work on that thing over years, I believe that the, that will guide them into finding out what is it they were meant to do.